No, no, no. We, we're I'm just on podcast. On. Kim, you're professionally meant to talk too much. That's literally why we're in the room together. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't realise how much I can talk. No, don't be silly. You're talking to someone who also can match you in the, in the ring on that one. No. What, what we, were you about to say? Because we are isolated physically from most of them, and Alfie wants to put on this, it's not an act, but he wants to look quite normal when he's with people. And for the short time they see him, they see normality. So for most of them, I'm making a big fuss over nothing. And I'm like, so I, I just don't bother anymore. And I think the best one was on Mother's Day with my daughters. And um, she, she'd done lunch and we were sitting there and at some point Alfie, something went down the wrong way and he choked. We didn't choke, I didn't need to do the Heimlich manoeuvre or anything, he just choked as you do. Um, and um, he then went off into the living room and sat there quietly and she said, Mum, don't you think you ought to go and see what's happening? I went, no, he's quiet if he's died. I said, if he was going to die, I'd have felt him fall over. And I get all these disgusted looks and I'm like, come on, you know, I know, none of you see him all the time. I know because he's much quieter now. You just go off and sit on his own. He yeah. does now, if he's struggling with anything, men um, I say mentally, emotionally, he will just walk away. And because... No one sees him that much, only me. They, then they're not understanding what's going on. And for me, it's like, oh, he's out of the room. I can just relax for five minutes, and no one gets that. But it's not cruelty. It's not uncaring. It's real life. And I think that's um, just for you know, for most of them, that's it. Um, yeah. But I, I felt like that for a long while, and. I, I've been seen by all the family as um, making a fuss or being neurotic. I don't think anyone knows the word neurotic nowadays. Anyway, for being whatever the new word for neurotic is and making it up because, no, he's not that bad. So I stopped because I got fed up with trying to be honest and truthful with people. And all it was seen as is you're making it up and you're feeling sorry for yourself or you're doing this or you're doing that. You know what I mean? It was all. So you, you just, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the only carer that feels like that, that it's. Um, you're, it's you stop. Thing, isn't it? Form of reverse gaslighting. When, <laughs> when you're, you're, you look hysterical, you're trying to explain because you're seeing the symptoms and everyone else is going. Oh, come on, I think you're overreacting. So you just look more insane when actually you're then realising the role of being the carer for someone you love and you know what's actually happening. I think most people um, go through times of just hating it. And I think some of that comes from the cared for as well. Yeah. Because they especially in this situation with the because it's the brain that's affected that you we get these little um gaps where normality comes through with it and that can make you feel really really sort of not angry because i want the deterioration i don't want that but it, there's no um it's all over the place. It's just a different version of the mixed ball of wool. Um, and he did manage to describe it as his head is like fairy lights. Mm. And most of the time, so we get these little glimmers of things occasionally, but um, it's most of the time they're, they're not on. And sometimes one will come on flickering and they'll be flickering. So he's getting a little bit, he's working in there. And then you'll get the one in the old fashioned light bulbs where they used to screw them in to make sure they worked, which I think most young people wouldn't even know what we're talking about now because they're all LED. Um, and, you try, and, and it was like one of those has been slightly unscrewed. So everything's gone. 
and then it's trying to get that screw back up so the lights come on again. He managed to describe that, and um, which was very good for him. <laughs> I, I don't know where it can, they just come in, they just get in my head and then I've got to write it down. But it, it's, I like to think of visual things that can describe um, feelings. And um, not always easy for people to understand. And I'm very aware of that because when I, I my, the thing that I have to think of every time is I had a student once and I was trying to explain to her how we learn things and he used the metaphor of being on a beach and a big wave coming in and I said to her that's where all that information is thrown at you a big wave I said but the important thing is when it goes out you'll get a little wave comes in I said and that's the stuff you will take in and she just looked at me blank <laughs> give up Kim <laughs> there's no point trying to explain it in metaphors not everybody gets it I was just trying to explain to her, she, there, there was a conversation about learning and I was trying to explain to her, that's how, that's how we learn. We get so much thrown at us, we can't take it all in, but when the, the, um, the little waves come up, we take it in. He's lost it, but he doesn't know, he's there's lost. bits that he doesn't know what to do. And these are all things he's already been able to do. So it's, it's about using that metaphor of an obstacle course, because it is like, life is like an obstacle course for them mm. at certain points. And that's what it, it's sort of putting all those, where is everyone that wanted him when he was great, when he could do things for people, when, when he was very useful to people, where are they all now? They've all disappeared. Yeah. And I think we were talking, talk a lot about respite, mm. and it suddenly dawned on that, this is my creative respite because way, way back before COVID hit us and lockdowns, when we used to have sort of carer, sort of steering group meetings. I'm going back to probably about 2017 or something like that at the Met. Um, we were talking about stuff and I can remember saying then, we need to be creative with respite. It doesn't fit boxes. So I said a long while ago, and then they started taking it on that we need a creative respite. Um, and I don't think anyone's realised it, but this is my creative respite. This is respite for me. And, you know, we have to look at it differently for everybody. And that's why, although Credit do lots of weekends away and things like that, that just wouldn't work for me. Yeah. Because... I've one, either got to take Alfie with me or I've got to try and find some care for him and that's just so difficult um, because of the, what I said about the whole dementia word because people that haven't experienced these different um, acquired brain injury conditions and things like that and something that's different, yeah, they still want to put the box so they still hear dementia so they think well, he wants to play musical instruments, which he hates. He doesn't even like music that much. So, you know, he absolutely, because there's a bit of him still that's that young person that could still do things and had different ideas about things. And and it's the patronisation that goes on a lot in some of these places that else I go to. Time. I go on and on about individual personalised care in whichever, for any of us. Um, but it, it's it's like... You know, my daughter used to go la 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 la. It's that. Um, without putting their hands up, there is. Um, if you talk to social services, they're so where the social model's gone, I have no idea. They've almost become the medical model because everything's got to fit in a box. Right. Because they're frightened to let it go outside the box. And the amount of times I say to them, this isn't about finances, this is about looking at what is there already. Let us share it. I'm, I'm, I think the day I die, everyone will be bloody relieved because they'll think she shut up at last. She stopped having a go at us about this and that and everything else. You called it pre-grief, didn't you? Yeah, it's pre-grieving because the person hasn't died. So you're you're pre-grieving, you're you're grieving for all the losses you've already had, but you're grieving to that point that hasn't come yet of the end of death 
you are your but your mind, your body is preparing yourself for that point, but it's an unknown point. Um, it was, I don't know, because I think I'm so blooming peculiar. My mum died many years ago, but she had cancer and I didn't even know. I already pre-grieved. I pre-grieved because I knew I was going to lose her. Mm. And that was so many years ago that nobody even used the word pre-grieving. And it wasn't until later. And... Once she'd, once she physically died, um, a lot of people seemed annoyed that I wasn't grieving. But I thought, actually, I did that for the last year. I was saying goodbye to her all the time for a year until it actually happened. But it was, I don't know, something innate in me that I, I don't know. It was a long while ago. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd, I'd already said I'd said goodbye so many times before. When it physically comes down to it, you're being society is sort of saying, but you should be floods of tears, you should be doing this or that. And I'm like, but she wasn't what she'd been to me all those years. She 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 died the thousand deaths before she actually died, you know. So it was um it fits the same. Cancer and dementia with the pre-grieving are the same. You're doing the same thing, you're doing the same sort of grief mm -hmm. journey. Yeah, and that that's interesting you say that because a couple of weeks ago I don't know we were talking about something and he's and he's I don't even know how it started but he basically and it was it it hurt so much and that's what you get an awful lot with dementia because the boundaries are gone and they were saying things and he didn't mean it to hurt but he said um but you're my companion and I said, oh, I said, two little old ladies are companions. And he just didn't get it. But everything. So when you get to that point, you know so much has gone to get to it. And, and that that just, that's that. I'm just thinking of shards of glass and thinking of when you've got a, we've had it before, a patio door was hit by something and it starts to shatter doesn't fall apart it's still intact but that grazed glazing grazing just goes and as as I'm as um as I was looking there was an advert for um the pottery for your for Alex's pottery business and and I'm thinking of glaze I did pottery many years ago and I was thinking of glaze when the glaze cracks same sort of thing and in pottery and and it's it's like that relationship there's all these cracks in the glass now that weren't there that make you, that bring those losses home. Sorry, that's just um, <laughs> the no. realisation. It, it's, yeah. um, and it's difficult when people are, are in denial because that's what, for some people, that keeps them sane. To yeah. pretend it's not and I would never knock it because everyone's got different ways of dealing with it yeah. I'm just one of those people I have to have all the facts because I have to have the facts so I know what I can do about it I've always been the same I'd rather know what's going on so that we can deal with it yeah than pretend it's not exist because that's even worse so what's I would rather I I just because we've talked so much and you've let me talk and I've been able to talk creatively I'd rather break those words into three separate words, the cost, the of, and the living, and sort of change it to live in the cost or living. It, it's junk, it's, it's not when you've got a lot of words and you just want to change the sentence around to give it a different meaning. Living, living with the cost. Yeah. Because I think that that brings it back into what we've talked about. It it brings it into a, a different sphere. And the shared experience is always still there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's um. It's true. On full circle with it, trying to start with. It never sat comfortably the the cost of living, but I think it's the living with the cost of caring, living with the cost of 
yeah, living with the emotional cost, living with the financial. But going back to social workers, they, they're always looking at it financially. And I'm sort of saying to them, no, it's not about finance. It's about you being really creative and thinking, are you listening to me? Because um, with credit, we're not looking at needs and unmet needs and I'm fed up with social services and their unmet needs and then needs. It's always got to be what you need, not what you want. And it's a different thing. We can all want certain things.